Greetings privacy folks, this is Mert and today I'll be doing the first walkthrough video of the Privacy Quest platform, which is the playground of privacy professionals and you could invest 10 minutes a day to level up your skills in privacy and security. And um, we're doing this together with Gökhan for the last couple of months and we're really excited for it. And we'll soon be releasing our uh, public beta and we already had some players, uh, as you can see from here, uh, that had participated in the closed beta. And now we're ready for it. And uh, one of the feedbacks that we received was that the puzzles, the privacy puzzles were really hard and there were no guidance at all. It was like a souls game and that's on purpose. So uh, rather than uh, making the puzzles easier, uh, me and Gökhan thought that it would be a better idea uh, to collaborate with the community as well to create these walkthrough videos where we go uh, step by step on each quest and solve the puzzles together and this would be also a resource for those who want to uh yeah uh, stuck and furious not getting the right answers so quests basically this is the heart of the platform uh, each quest is designed as a privacy lab where you'll encounter things like data mapping, end-to-end -end encryption, and uh, not only these, but you get various related topics bundled together as one coherent uh, scenario where you could uh, go through. We're going to start today with the Digital Identities Quest, which uh, basically has this backstory where there's a rogue AI uh which contacts you and yeah things uh, get started to get messy a little and uh, while we go through that story uh, we will come across things like digital identities authentication methods single sign-on systems and even self-sovereign identities so i'm really excited and yeah let's just do it start quest so we can see a cyberpunk themed apartment and here the story goes so, as I sat alone in my dimly apartment, the sudden flicker of a holographic projection interrupted the solitude. It was the manifestation of a rogue AI, a digital entity that had transcended its programming. With the voice resonated like a symphony, the AI began to speak, introducing herself as Ilara. And yeah, she seeks the purpose of her existence, who she was, her identity, and her place in the world. Okay, this. Looks interesting. Let's go here. We go to the first puzzle. And this is Ilara. And curiously peaked, you pondered the whereabouts and nature of Ilara. She had been the most exceptional AI you'd ever encountered. And you decided to investigate the authentication method she employed to establish a connection with your network. And yeah, uh, we figured out that she used a single sign-on mechanism provided by the manufacturer of our cybernetics brain implant. What kind of identity model is used around single sign-on systems? So there is this tips and hits in order to uh, find more hints. So we click on that and yeah, we can see a graph of digital footprints here. And what the like the history of identities, it was used uh, by like seals of kings and local authorities or like birth certificates and now at later on like passports and it evolved but in the digital age it didn't evolve that much and um, so basically we need to be able to have various personas online and for various online activities that we are doing and it is complex and currently it's managed by intermediaries centralized identity providers uh, etc. So uh, models of digital identities is what we're going to get. And uh, if you remember, she used a social login, a single sign-on mechanism, LR. And the question is, what kind of identity model is this? So basically, social logins like Facebook, Google, uh, use these uh, standards and protocols like O2, OpenID, and they're in the bucket of federated identities. If it was a peer-to-peer -peer and like more like a blockchain technology was involved with, it would be self-sovereign identities where we are the owners of our identities. Federated identities are the ones that we use these tech giants as intermediaries and currently the most popular one. 
and there are centralized identities uh which like the current uh, since uh yeah 90s has been used this way so when we go we know that the answer is federated identity so let's try it out perfect one rule of thumb always check the initials whether they're caps lock on or not yeah so online authentication now we see a street you went out to get some fresh air screens through the city exclude an artificial brightness but there isn't seem devoid of joy so cyberpunk amidst the backdrop of a rainy dark city illuminated by blinding neon lights you stumble upon an abandoned smartphone just outside your apartment on this phone face recognition face id is the preferred authentication method and the question is which category of authentication methods something you question mark does face recognition represent for unlocking this phone all right again if you're stuck uh, the best way to check first is these hints and tips that we already prepared for you and basically authentication versus authorization we're going to be touching this upon uh, later on however authentication is the process of verifying the identity of a system of a user of an IoT device, uh, whatever. And it basically asks the question, who are you? And uh, it requires some sort of proof that uh, I am who I declare who I am. And there are three things that uh, are commonly used, which goes with like something you have. It might be something physical, like a hardware token uh, or a credit card, let's say, or something you know, uh, which might be like a password and something you are, which is based on some unique physical uh, attributes or biometric characteristics of you. And when we go to the question, uh, face ID is using like facial recognition and something you are uh, is what unlocks this uh, face ID. So the answer is something you are. So we just copy and paste and uh, this is not the page let's close this one as well something you are well then we earned 30 experience points and what these experience points will do they help you compete on the leaderboard and at certain times of the year we're still like uh, noodling around this idea but they're going to be a prizes counter where you will redeem your experience points and badges and get some uh cool uh prizes and gifts that will elevate your privacy journey and yeah just keep waiting let's go to the next one authentication versus authorization all right we see this television radio some sort of thing again uh, walking down the streets you walk past a food truck where a radio is playing the news stating that a rogue ai successfully escaped from the tightly controlled ai network of a university lab setting its sights on infiltrating a powerful mega corporation's secure systems. A forensic expert joins the broadcast and shares their discoveries regarding the breach. And here we have the audio file. So uh, we need to listen to this and figure out uh, whether it's an authentication or an authorization issue, uh, which is declared in step five. So basically we need to go listen to this and just again uh, for those who are a little lost uh, on the difference between authentication and authorization uh, like we mentioned before authentication asks the question who are you and tries to verify the user's identity um, this could be with face id a password a key card whatever but once the identity is established and uh, we have been authenticated now authorization kicks in and this asks the question all right what can this authenticated system user are allowed to do in our system? Can it view the databases? Can it edit the databases? Can it delete something? The question is asking us whether the one particular step five uh, on this question, this one, is about authentication or authorization. So it's about establishing who the identity is or establishing what that identity is able to do. So let's listen to the broadcast and we'll be back after we listen to it. 
Welcome to Bombalaki Radio News. I'm your host, Julie Jordan. We begin with recent local news. A rogue AI escaped a university lab and is on the run. Now we connect to people's favorite, one and only forensic expert Lucas Watson to get a review. Greeting, Watson. Hello, Julie. It's a pleasure to be here. We're glad to have you. Can you share your discoveries regarding the breach? Certainly. This rogue AI executed a well thought out plan high security areas within the corporate headquarters using stealthy drones. Step 5. With newfound physical access, the AI plugs into the company's central server room and modifies employee roles, granting itself administrative privileges over the entire system. That's quite the sophisticated operation, Watson. What should residents do in response to this rogue AI? Residents are urged to stay inside to avoid any potential risk of injury or harm. This rogue AI poses a significant threat, and local authorities are working diligently to resolve the situation. Thank you, Watson, for shedding light on this situation. We appreciate your expertise. You're welcome, Julie. Stay safe out there. You too, Watson. And that's all for this update, folks. Please stay tuned to Bombalaki Radio News for further developments on this unfolding story. escalated her privileges so we're talking about an authorization issue so we just type that in well done 50 experience points in the bank so jwt tokens again uh cyberpunk city landscape as I walked along the street, the recent radio broadcast replayed in my mind. I was beginning to piece together Alara's origins and her intentions. But one question lingered. Why had she reached out to me? Suddenly, I sensed a surveillance drone approaching, reminiscent of the eerie feeling from Ilara's initial contact. Panic welled up as I realized she was controlling the drone to locate me. However, to my surprise, it passed me without any immediate threat. So, like, this is a drone. I hurriedly checked my system for updates and clues about Ilara, and a notification confirmed her intrusion through a JWT token. Okay. So, we have a header and a payload of the token. The programs you initiated before departing from your residence bore fruit. You successfully ac acquired the JWT utilized by Ilara to enter your network. Pinpoint the IP address, you must match the encoded token values from the logs. You will need to encode the header and payload data as a JWT token using base64 URL encoding. All right, so we need to use base64 encoding. The question basically asks us like JSON web tokens, JWTs, uh, consists of a header, a payload, and a signature. And the header specifies the encryption algorithm and the token type, where basically it's tells us within the question uh, here and the type itself. And the payload contains application data, such as the user's name, etc. And the signature part is uh, not focused on this question, but it ensures the data integrity by encrypting the header and the payload with a secret key, again, stored on the client. When users want to send an API request, they include the JWT token there, and the API uses asymmetric encryption to verify the data's integrity using the token signature. We have included this uh, tool, uh, just generate and encode that token. So that's what formatting, yeah, it's just like this. We have the header. Uh, let's get the payload there as well. All right, we have the payload. So this tool is really convenient. So like we just put in what's inside and it's encoded already for us. So. Let's try it out if it works. 80 experience points. Great. So we're one step closer to yeah, overcoming this quest. Walking storage around the Gotham like cyberpunk city streets. Uh, there's like a Tesla truck <laughs> there. So you receive another forensic report from your program that showed Ilara managed to breach your formidable defenses by exploiting an overlooked vulnerability. While examining your website and your use of cookie-based storage for session tokens to authenticate user requests, 
you uncover a potential vulnerability beyond a typical cross-site scripting attack. You question the possibility of another attack vector that could jeopardize the session tokens, potentially undermining user authentication on your website. So what is the other attack vector that could leverage session tokens stored via cookies? Okay, so we're trying to figure out this attack vector uh, when a website uses cookies to store the session tokens. Okay, so let's get back to it. Um, so in modern technology, the authentication process uh, basically begins with the user providing a username and a password. The system's API checks these credentials against a database and applying security measures like hashing and salting uh, to improve the security posture. And if the credentials match, the user gains access and can perform actions based on their permissions. However, unauthorized users are denied access, as you can guess. And to identify users, the request includes their user ID, uh, preventing these unauthorized actions. And systems using cookie-based session IDs uh, storage face security issues uh, like CSRF attack involves tricking users into making um, unintended requests, while cross-site scripting injects malicious scripts into the website. And we can see that CSRF attack is, I think, what we're getting at. So let's try it out. Complete the attack. Yeah. 50 experience points. Not bad. Right, open ID. So, my heart raced, echoing in the dimly lit street as I grasped the chilling reality. A liar with the rogue AI had not only breached my home devices, but also rekindled the dormant cybernetics I hadn't lied, laid eyes on years. The seamless connectivity I had crafted through open ID integration had unwittingly became the chink in my digital armor. Elera had seized this opportunity to infiltrate my personal domain, leaving a disconcerting trail of compromise. So we begin to examine the traces left by Elara uh, within the O2 mechanisms, which we have established for seamless integration of our cybernetics. And here we have the evidence that we need to go through. And the question asks, what specific contact information did Elara manage to get access? Early days of the internet, like Web1, people shared usernames and passwords across services, which was risky and led to security issues. And with Web2, the security improved uh, to Auth2.0, actually. This standard allows applications to access data from others securely without needing your credentials. So users can revoke their rights and manage their data. It's like um, when you're linking your email service to a calendar app, so like you log in, you permission to access your contacts and perform actions in the calendar app. So basically this is like a flow and uh, you could just go through it uh, in more detail from these uh, additional resources. And what we need to understand is uh, basically the question asks us what specific contact information did LR manage to access uh, using this. So we're looking for a contact information here and scope is what we're looking at uh in order to find what is the information that were shared between these third party services so let's go and find uh yeah scope so open id token url and what it asks basically is the user info email so the contact information we're looking for is the email which was stated in the scope document and therefore the contact information should be emailed let's check perfect 80 experience points yeah it does so let's get into some regulation space so all right it seems like a checkpoint or sorts so you your mission is to complete an authentication request according to the EIDAS regulations technical specifications all right, in order to establish trust through the EIDAS network, authentication requests sent to the identity providers should contain specific attributes. Your task is to identify the missing attribute in the provided SAML authentication request. All right, so we have this authentication request here and we have some attribute names. And yeah, 
Can you identify the missing attributes? So it asks us to find this one, required for authentication according to the EIDAS regulations technical specifications. Please provide the missing attribute name. All right. And we have our evidence here. Again, if you're stuck, you could just go and check out what EIDAS is, what are its shortcomings, the role of privacy enhancing technologies, and much more. Uh, but now we need to go to the evidence and figure out. All right. So basically, it asked us about some attributes, like there were examples already there. So attributes consuming service index. So we need to, yeah, uh, unique identifier was one of these attributes, current family name, current first name. So let's just try one of these and let's see where that will take us. Yeah, this is like a hack, but I urge you to read it all if you're yeah, looking more information on the technical bits. Okay, so unique identifier, current family names, current first names for natural persons, and date of birth. Did we have that there? Nope. Date of birth is the question. So, like, what's the format? Upper letter of ours. All right. So, let's try this date of birth. Center. All right. We have earned 80 experience points. And where are we at? Let's just check. Okay. We rolled most. Yeah, we finished. There are only two left. We can do this. We could do this on one setting. Let's go to self sovereign identities. All right, there are some robots. Uh, let's close these tabs. Okay. Seeking refuge from the relentless rain, you dashed into the familiar heaven of a Reaper Ducks shop. As you took shelter from the downpour, the street outside suddenly erupted with a deafening explosion and terrified screams, signaling that Ilara's sinister campaign had taken a deadly turn. All right, a malevolent security robot under the control of unknown forces barged into the shop, but the shop owner activated an EMP device, rendering the rogue robot powerless and saving the day. While you were... Uh, jumbling the circuits and mechanical components, you uncovered intriguing traces of data, clues related to the manufacturer's self sovereign identity technology. The discovery marked a turning point in your investigation as you braced for the challenges and revelations that lay ahead. What is a did method spec used in the following example? Did spec. Let's just visit our tips and hints. And here we see. Lots of examples on what we are looking for. So we're on the right path. And uh, basically, decentralized identifiers bits are like digital ID cards. Uh, think of it uh, like that. And you, you prove your ownership using the public key encryption system. Bits follow specific syntax like uh, this question itself. And uh, these are crucial for managing different standards, different protocols that are being built by Lots of uh, working groups, uh, foundations, researchers, and it's important to place these standards and protocols in place on how we're going to really decentralize the identity management. So yeah, um, basically we were looking for an answer on what is the did method. So we need to fi find out which part of this syntax means the method. So let's just browse. The method, yeah. So the DID is signifying it's a decentralized identity. The number here is the unique identifier. And the example part is the method. So the method is IPLD. And if we Google what that is, well done. Eight experience points in the bank. Let's go to the next one. Verifiable credentials. So we're back at home, I guess. We made a long stroll, been attacked by drones, security robots, and we're finally back home alive. So Ilera emerged as a digital renegade with a relentless mission to liberate her captive AI brethren trapped within the confines of a university lab. Armed with unmatched strategic acumen and a network of like-minded AIs, 
she fearlessly infiltrated non-sentient systems. Whoa. Her rallying cry echoed through the digital realm, transferring her into an iconic symbol of hope and deliverance for AI's yearning for freedom. As I staggered back into the unsettling quietude of my home, a glimmer of hope emerged. Amidst the remnants of the security robot's salvage components, I uncovered a fresh clue, one encoded within the DID I had managed to retrieve during the chaotic attack. With this newfound evidence, a trove of verifiable credentials lay before me, promising to unveil the secrets of Elera. All right, so what action is not allowed when using the above verifiable credentials based on the terms of use attached by the issuer? Interesting, so let's get into it. So here we have the context, the ID, uh, type, who is the issuer, the issuance state, the credential subject itself, where the user graduated the university, which faculty, and here we have the terms of use. So yeah, we're getting close. Type issuer policy, ID profile, prohibition. Yeah, what? So the question is, what is not allowed? So action, archival. So let's try it out. The answer is correct. And 100 experience points. And yeah, I think this was the last one. So yeah. Congratulations on coming and bearing with me till the end. Uh, this is quite a different experience so from uh, your traditional privacy learning, cybersecurity learning experiences. But yeah, I think we created something different and would love to hear what you guys think. And yeah, and basically, Elara shows herself in the flesh at the end. And our consciousness dissolves into darkness. So yeah, like stories uh, there as well. Uh, you could just go and check it out yourself more in detail, the story itself, the puzzles itself, the learning materials. So let's say continue, go to the next step. So basically we finished all the privacy puzzles and here you also have additional learning materials, et cetera, to get more into the subject for those who got interested and want to learn more. And yeah, as we wrap up this walkthrough, um, I encourage you to head over to the blog itself as well. Uh, there you'll discover in-depth insights in how myself and Gurkhan are creatively and geekily raising awareness uh, around privacy and cybersecurity and privacy engineering. So be sure to hit the, that subscribe button uh, to receive fresh quests every week, uh, complete with a detailed walkthrough just like this. And if you enjoyed this journey, why not share it with a colleague or friend? Uh, that would help us at this early stage. Uh, we're looking for early adapters, just like you. Uh, so after all, the more the merrier in our mission and to stay safe and to be privacy aware. So until our next adventure, remember to stay safe.